Wedged between the Yarra River and Port Melbourne, today the suburb of Fisherman's Bend is best known for being a large industrial area with warehouses, factories and port facilities. It is also the site of Australia's largest urban renewal precinct. This involves converting a lot of the existing land from industrial to other uses and aims to house over 80,000 people and jobs. With all of this current activity, it's easy to forget that this was also the site of some of Melbourne's very first airports, as well as the Centre for Aviation Research and Manufacturing in Victoria and Australia for many decades. The first use for aircraft was back in 1919. One of Australia's early pioneers of aviation, Robert Graham Carey, established an airstrip at the western end of Graham Street in Fisherman's Bend. He ran joy flights from here starting on the 21st of April 1919, becoming the Melbourne Air Service in the next year. Then in 1921, the Commonwealth Government established the Civil Aviation Branch of the Department of Defence. They developed the first sets of regulations for airports in Australia, with aerodromes now having to apply for licences in order to operate. The very first one to achieve this in Australia was this very airstrip at Fisherman's Bend. It just beat Essendon Airport to the title, then called St John's Field, by just a few months. It continued to be used for joy rides and recreational flying for many years. But this time also marked the beginning of its long association with research and development when the military began using it for test flights. Soon afterwards, the Royal Australian Air Force, or RAAF, became regular visitors at the aerodrome, using it for pilots to stop over. Fisherman's Bend rapidly increased in popularity and needed more and upgraded facilities to keep up with demand. By the 1930s, many other aerodromes and airstrips were operating across Melbourne as the aviation craze was in full swing. As a result of this and the increasing demands of new, more modern aircraft, the airstrip badly needed upgrading. The federal and Victorian governments then began a six-year war of words, disagreeing over developing the area to be used for aviation. Then, in October 1936, the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, or CAC, was established. This was to be one of the most important organisations in Australia's aviation history, providing aircraft design, manufacturing and research. Together with the Commonwealth Government's Department of Aircraft Production, which was established three years later at the onset of the Second World War, these two powerhouses did most of their work at Fisherman's Bend in their early days. The creation of the CAC forced the hand of the state government, who were originally opposed to using Fisherman's Bend for an expanded aerodrome. So in November 1936, Victorian Premier Albert Dunstan announced that land had been allocated for the CAC to construct a new aerodrome at Fisherman's Bend. This was built further west from the original one, just near the mouth of the Yarra River, and adjacent to the new General Motors Holden factory on Salmon Street, which I have covered in a previous video. The design of the new aerodrome was centred on three runways, arranged in a triangular configuration. This was common at the time, particularly for military airfields. The main reason for this was that it was easy and quick to build. In addition, having three runways in three different directions meant that at least one runway would be facing the right way into prevailing winds from most directions. With the construction of new factories and other facilities on and around Lorimer Street, Fisherman's Bend became the centre of Australian aviation for many decades. The beginning of the Second World War in 1939 forced Australia into a rapid build-up of its capabilities. For a country that had begun with very little and previously relied almost entirely on overseas expertise and materials, this was an amazing achievement. The first aircraft that were built at these new facilities were an advanced trainer under licence from the United States, known as the NA-16. This was chosen as it was a relatively simple design to construct, given that Australia was more or less starting from scratch. It was envisaged that the experience of building them would prepare the CAC to design and build their own aircraft in the future. These license-built NA-16s became known as Wiraways, and one of the most famous Australian-built aircraft. Many others were designed and or manufactured here, including the CA-11 Woomera, the CA-12 Boomerang, and CA-18 Mustangs, 
all of which served vital roles during the war. Many of these and other planes were tested at the Fisherman's Bend Aerodrome, as this was its main intended purpose. Given the wartime conditions, normal safety constraints were often bent or just disregarded entirely. The relatively short runways meant that larger four-engine bombers, such as Flying Fortresses and Liberators, were technically not able to take off or land here, but they did it anyway. By the end of the war, thousands of aircraft had been built and tested here, and even other vehicles such as the Sentinel tank. The CAC began turning its attention to jet aircraft, including a variant of the F-86 Sabre fighter from 1953 to 1961. But this also meant that the small aerodrome, now completely surrounded by water, factories and residential areas, could no longer safely accommodate these more modern aircraft. As a result, testing was moved to the new facilities being built at Avalon, and the aerodrome at Fisherman's Bend was shut down soon afterwards. In terms of manufacturing, the final aircraft to be produced at Fisherman's Bend was an N-22 Nomad. After this production ended, its days were unfortunately numbered. All remaining manufacturing capabilities were moved to Avalon and other areas. The facilities continued to make components for the government aircraft factories in other parts of Victoria and Australia, such as for the Dassault Mirage III fighters, but only in a support capacity. So what happened to the aerodrome after aircraft testing ceased? Well, it still hung around for a while longer. It gained a new lease of life in 1948, when its three runways began to be used for racing motorbikes and cars. This continued as a popular venue until 1960, when the increasing speed of cars and the development of purpose-built racing facilities, such as Phillip Island and Calder, meant that racing soon ceased. But again, all was not lost for the aerodrome. In 1962, drag racing began to use the runways and taxiways. This continued until 1966, when the Lower Yarra Freeway and Westgate Bridge began construction. The bridge's eastern approaches went through the southern portion of the runways, and so use of the former aerodrome finally ceased. By 1971, the airport runways and taxiways had been removed. Todd Road was built on the alignment of the former north-south runway, where it remains today. The CAC itself survived until the 1st of July 1986, when it merged with Hawker de Havilland. The Department of Aircraft Production, later renamed to Government Aircraft Factories and Aerospace Technologies of Australia, was privatised in 1995 and also became part of Boeing, which later set up its facilities in the former CAC buildings. If you visit Fisherman's Bend today, there are still quite a few indications of this history. The CAC buildings here located at 226 Lorimer Street near the Westgate Bridge are now part of Boeing Australia which conducts research and development and manufactures some components for the 787 Dreamliner. As I mentioned before, Todd Road was built when the Westgate Bridge was constructed on the alignment of the former North-South Runway, accounting for its slightly off-centre route. Most of the CAC buildings were unfortunately demolished in 2003 to 2004, but some still remain. The main administrative wing on Lorimer Street is still here, as well as some of those used by the government aircraft factories. Three of the Bellman hangars and one butler hangar out of the many that were at Fisherman's Bend were moved to Tyab Airport, where at least one remains today. These are considered rare and are heritage listed. Many street names in the western end of Fisherman's Bend also pay tribute to the aviation history, such as Canberra Street and Sabre Drive. One of the suburbs in the proposed redevelopment of the area is also derived from the aerodrome, which is to be officially called Wirraway. Have a walk or ride around if you get the chance. And although unfortunately none of the runways or taxiways themselves survive, there is plenty more to be found. Thanks for watching this video about Melbourne's Fishy Airport. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this so that you can stay up to date on the latest videos and continue to support this channel. As always, check out the video description for more information and the sources that I used. You can also visit my website at philipmalice.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.